So in this segment, we're going to be talking about Labour planning to partner with the private sector and take advantages of Brexit. Now, I have multiple issues with um, this statement off the bat, and we'll talk about that at the end of the video. Unfortunately, Starmer cancelled his speech in Huddersfield, so we couldn't actually get any um, details specifically about what um, he was planning or you know any specific details. As always, the Labour Party are very um, vague shocker so we'll just go through the article as best we can so labor will seek to reimagine the role of government as a partner to the private sector L labor should not be doing this this is not what labor's about labor are meant to be for the workers not for business owners so right off the bat it's very frustrating and to take advantages of the opportunities of brexit how how are you going to do that what what specifically is your plan because they don't mention it in the article Setting out his blueprint for future growth, the Labour leader will name six principles for the economy under a Labour government, starting with valuing the role of private companies as a partner to the state. Now, if you're talking about things which the state typically doesn't do, like customs agents and things like that, then fine. But it just I, I just don't know what to say. It doesn't make sense. He will also lay into Sunak, saying the Conservatives introduced 15 tax rises, including more than any other Chancellor in half a century, which is true, which is a fine attack line. Especially when you talk about them raising taxes on worker cl working class people with national insurance increases. Starmer will say that after 12 years of conservative government, the days of economic fatalism are over as he seeks to inject a note of optimism about the future of the economy under a Labour government. D does that mean he's going to inject more money into like businesses that are struggling or failing? I, I don't know. Fatalism. With Labour... Britain will once again once again grow and it's kind of that populist rhetoric he's going for and from the proceeds of that growth will breed will build a new economy and a new Britain one based on security prosperity and respect for all the problems with these statements are typically with private businesses they you know seek bailouts and grants and things like that and they will privatize the profits and socialize the losses and this is you know the weakness that this kind of labor government could face when you're giving a lot of money to private businesses when you partner with them they're going to privatize a lot of the profits they're going to try and sh uh, some of these will try and put as much money of, uh, into offshore tax havens and things like that as much as possible and dividends so they don't have to pay as much in taxes that's going to be a key problem which I don't think Labour are going to reform. The Labour leader will also stress his backing for British businesses, saying Britain cannot rise to the greatest challenges of the day without innovation of business. But again, you know, how are you going to achieve this? That's another problem. How do you want businesses to innovate? Because typically, um, businesses do find they innovate on their own fine to get, a, you know, to jump over whatever hurdles they're facing. You know, we're even seeing businesses doing their best to adapt to all the new import checks and things like that. He will say a political party without a clear plan for making sure businesses are successful and growing, which doesn't want them to do well and make a profit, has no hope of being successful government. So again, he's framing the Labour Party as the pro-business party, which is true. Businesses do have to make a profit. The problem is with a lot of businesses, they take a lot of the profits, you know, it goes to the shareholders and the owner class, etc. But it doesn't go to the people who generate the profit, which is the, the, wor the workers. That's a key problem, which are Labour going to reset that imbalance when it comes to big corporations? That's a key question, which I'm not sure about. His comments will be seen as an attempt to draw a further line uh, under the le leadership of Jeremy Corbyn, who was viewed with suspicion by making many business interests um, because of his by many big business interests because of support for nationalizing some sectors which Starmer when he was running for leadership of the Labour Party did push um, you know and other you know certain EU members do actually have um, nationalization to an extent of private companies I think EDF would be the best example of that the French energy company which the French government has a massive share in so again there's nothing there's nothing wrong with wanting nationalization of key sectors especially you know the main utilities gas electric internet um and all those sorts of things because we're seeing it right now that these companies are just constantly price gouging consumers um and you know they have you know a, a very much um not a monopoly per se but you know there's no real competition in the UK for um things like internet i know that firsthand so again, you know, Starmer's kind of framing is just ridiculous. He's trying to push this idea we're pro-business and all these things when that's what not what the Labour Party should be about, not really. 
Starmer's support for the government partnering with companies is likely to dismay critics on the left of the party, which, while his focus on the opportunities of Brexit is likely to frustrate staunch Remainers, which, again, there's nothing going for this, you know, maximising the opportunities of Brexit, but you're going to have to tell us what these opportunities are and, you know, how business is going to achieve this, because the government are saying, oh, you've got to look at emerging markets and export more to New Zealand and Australia and all these things, right, which are very difficult to do because of geography. So, again, you know, it frustrates me to no end that Starmer keeps talking with these vague um, statements, you know, make Brexit work and all this stuff, when if I was a journalist, if I had the chance to interview Starmer, I'd say, how are you going to do it? How are you going to make Brexit work? What's your plan? Because, you know, the best that I've heard is they're going to try and get equivalency deals with the EU, which I don't think the EU are actually going to give us equivalency deals on agri-food. I I, I struggle to see that really happening um, because they want dynamic alignment, which makes sense because it gets rid of a lot of headaches for the EU, which I agree with. You know, if I was in the EU, I'd say we're not giving you equivalency. We want dynamic alignment, just like the Swiss. He received a sceptical response from uh, Gaia. I'm not going to... What's that? Sris Kathan? co-chair of Momentum, the socialist group set up under Corbyn's leadership, who said the public aren't stupid. They know that pushing more growth when growth only benefits at the top misses the mark. That's that's the problem, though. Growth doesn't just benefit the people at the top unless you push for a trickle down system. If you push for a more kind of Nordic model where you have higher taxation on you know things like profits, you can trickle down that wealth. You can force it down. But the thing is, under the current British system, it doesn't work. Trickle-down economics doesn't work. You have to make it work. That's the problem. It doesn't work on its own. Fixing it requires taxing the richest, which is true. Taking on corporate interests, again, 100% agree. And bringing key industries into public ownership. All policies popular with the public. But the thing is, he doesn't offer any polling data. Starmer of 2020 recognised this when he was running as Labour leader. His other focal points for the economy include putting money back in people's pockets, revitalising the places that once powered Britain. And again, if he's talking about former manufacturing cities, that's not going to work because manufacturing isn't going to come back, especially in a post-Brexit world where manufacturing right now is, is struggling. We're struggling to get raw materials into the country and then finished products. We're struggling to get them out of the country. That's a key problem. So manufacturing won't return to the UK. It's only going to get worse. Because manufacturers are going to wonder, is this worth our time? That's a key problem. Ending the era of insecure unemployment, which again is a good point. And driving up productivity and wages. But how are you going to achieve this? You know, in in business, they have aims and objectives. One are short terms and the other ones are longer terms. One, I can't remember the exact way they go, but I think it's objectives are the longer term ones and the aims are the specifics of what you're going to do. And the thing is, Labour can have all of these big objectives, but with no specific aims, it doesn't help. Starmer has been touring the country in recent weeks, especially in the north of England. You know, he's trying to to focus on the north of England, especially, you know, talking about the cost of living, which is good. Talk about these things. But what are you going to do to resolve them? You know, by bringing the key utilities into um, government control, you can get rid of the profit objective and run it instead of at, you know, wherever it is now, 15, 20, 25 percent profit, um, run it at 5 percent profit, things like that, where you can really help people. The party's strategy is for Starmer to keep his focus on issues such as tax and the cost of living to keep the heat on Tory divisions. But the thing is, people are going to ask you the question, how are you going to solve these issues? And you have absolutely nothing. This is as well to put Sunak in the spotlight, given his ambitions to succeed Johnson, which is fine. But, you know, they've offered no specifics. It might be slightly unfair to Starmer because of the fact that he had to cancel his speech, but he hasn't offered specifics in any of these other speeches from what I've seen, so why would this one be any different? And if you look at Huddersfield, um, there's a Labour MP, the British Labour and Cooperative politician, who serves the people of Huddersfield. Um, if you look at their uh, Brexit result, they voted just above 50, uh, so just above um, half, to uh, vote for Brexit, so you know it, it, they might not bre- vote um, support Brexit now. Um, things change, demographics, etc. Um, 2016 was a long time ago, but the simple fact is, Starmer can talk about, oh, we're the party of business now. You know, we're going to help businesses get get the Brexit Brexit opportunities. The question is, how are you going to do it? That's a key problem I have with uh, Starmer, and unless he's going to explain that bit, I don't think he's going to get very far. You know, Labour are up in the polls, but he himself is not very popular. And that's a key problem he's going to have to face up to. 
But, um, you know, Labour will partner with private sector and take advantage of Brexit. How are you going to ch achieve that? I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe and um, support the channel on Patreon if you can. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.